If you're wondering how you can get into software engineering without a computer science or an engineering degree, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the process that you can use to get started with software engineering, from self-study to boot camps to building up your resume, different kinds of projects that you can work on, networking, applying for jobs, interviewing, basically the entire process that will eventually get you the job in the field of engineering without a CS or a software engineering degree. How's it going guys? My name is Utsav, I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington, and this channel is all about demystifying the process of becoming an effective and a productive software engineer. So if you are into that too, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, this video has timestamps, so feel free to skip around or jump to the sections that are more interesting to you. And also links to everything I talk about in this video will be in the description below. All right, let's get started. So the first option you need to consider when starting in software engineering is self-study. You need to be comfortable with picking up a couple of books or looking at random resources or watching videos to start to learn things on your own. The reason I mention this is because the field of software engineering itself, when you actually get the job, evolves and changes very rapidly. So you need to get into the habit of learning by yourself, picking up new things, and basically updating your knowledge pretty rapidly and on your own. So that will be a skill not only that will get you started in software engineering, but also be useful when you actually become a software engineer. In terms of self-study, you want to start by learning the basics of computer science. I know it is really tempting to go and start building this app that you've always wanted to, or maybe you're an entrepreneur and you've got a brilliant startup idea that you want to work on and, or anything else, you just want to get hands-on with building something new. While that's extremely tempting and it can be rewarding to build something and see it come to fruition right away, I highly encourage you to not do that. The reason I say that is because that's almost like taking a shortcut to learning about software engineering and on the long run, that kind of comes back to bite you. You need to understand the foundations of computing, how sorting works, how searching works, how data structures work, why certain things are a certain way and how to actually properly use them before you start building something that is more end-to-end, -end, even, even if it's a simple app. How do we go about finding the resources to actually learn the fundamentals, right? Luckily, the best and probably the only resources you need are available on YouTube for free. I will link them in the description below, but there are courses, full courses, end-to-end, -end, that are very highly rated, topped by some of the best professors in the academic world that are free on YouTube. Courses from Stanford, courses from MIT, Harvard, Carnegie Mellon, they're all available. Sure, they may be a few years old or even 10 years old, but the foundations of computer science hasn't changed for like over 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, however that is. Don't worry about it being outdated or anything like that, or maybe they'll use C++ or some other language that you're not interested in. That's okay, it doesn't matter. The goal is to learn about how it works, and it's the same in every language. So once you feel comfortable after doing that course, you may have to do it once or twice in, to get the hang of it. That's when you can start moving towards like the tutorial section where they'll build an app end to end or whatever you're trying to learn. If you're trying to be a front end developer, then you may want to focus on more UI and things like that. If you're trying to be a back-end developer, you probably want to look at more of the back-end stuff, APIs and things like that. And if you're confused about what you want to do, I actually have a video where I talk about all the career paths in software engineering. So you can check that out to kind of get a feel for which area you think you'd fit well. And then based on that, that's where you want to focus on after being comfortable with the foundations. So that's self-study. but. Self-study is hard and self-study takes a lot of discipline. Not everyone is, um, I don't want to say capable, but not everyone likes self-study or the ambiguity of self-study because you have to be really disciplined. You need to be able to create your own calendar schedules and then somehow evaluate yourself on whether you're improving or making progress and make changes based on that. So. If just the thought of this makes you cringe or nervous, then maybe self-study is not an option to you. And that takes me to the next option, which is a bootcamp. With the bootcamp, what happens is your structure will be designed by somebody else. You can focus your time and just learning. So if that sounds more appealing, then maybe bootcamp is an option to you. While it's okay to just sign up for bootcamp and just show up on day one and just be like, hey, I've never had any experience, so you guys help me. Um, that's okay because that's what they're designed to do. 
But if you actually do some self-study beforehand, you've gone through the courses I mentioned at least a couple of times, even though you didn't understand, that's okay. Uh, you will still at least have some idea about what's involved in the area of software engineering. What what are the tech stacks? What or, or what field of software engineering are you interested in? Having just that much idea sets you up for success on a bootcamp so much more than anybody else that just randomly shows up on day one without any prior due diligence or research or or, or self-study, right? Whether you want to go fully self-study and just get it done by yourself, or you plan to attend a boot camp, I highly recommend at least spend two, three months trying to self-study, even if you don't like that whole idea. Next question comes in, how do you choose boot camps, right? Um, so the prerequisite to choosing boot camp is knowing what field of software engineering you want to go in. And that again connects to doing some self-study and research on the areas that you want to be in because lots of boot camps that I have seen focus on the front end side of things because it's usually less technical, it's easier to get into. So a lot of people pick it fast and that's an overall kind of win-win for everybody. But maybe you want to be a full stack engineer, maybe you want to be an infrastructure engineer, maybe you want to get into data science. I don't know, you know, that's up to you. But knowing that beforehand will help you decide what boot camps are there. So know what you want beforehand, do your self-study, and then evaluate the bootcamp based on their ratings first, areas of engineering that they teach second, the type of programming languages, frameworks they use, and lastly, their placements, because the only reason you're really doing bootcamp is to get a job somewhere. So it's really important to get the statistic from them on what their placement rate is like. So don't be afraid to email them or have a phone call with them and ask them, hey, how many students have graduated since you started your bootcamp? How many of them have gotten a job? What's the average time it takes from some student graduating from the bootcamp to them getting the job or landing the job? What's the average salary they're getting? What's the average industry they're getting into? Ask all those difficult questions. Eventually, you're paying them money and you deserve to know those answers. So make a list and ask them all the difficult questions. And I will actually add some of the questions in the description below that you can ask the bootcamp. So you can use that as a template or uh, make your own questions, you know, feel free to evaluate them. And again, do, do the hard work upfront, self-study, make a big survey sheet, ask all the difficult questions to the bootcamp, kind of fill out your own sort of um, rating systems where you rate each of the bootcamp. And based on the data you have, pick the ones that fit in your needs. And one other thing I wanted to say is just because a bootcamp is more expensive or has a nicer website or fancier advertisement doesn't mean that they're better at producing better software engineers, right? So do evaluate them without paying too much attention to how fancy their website looks. Do your due diligence uh, by yourself. Okay, so you've decided you want to get into software engineering, you've done your self-study or you've done self-study and bootcamp and you've graduated. You've probably worked on a decent project in a bootcamp or on your own as a self-study project, but that usually won't be enough. If it is, great for you. Usually the idea is to find some more projects, you know, like maybe a little bit complicated, more involved and kind of um, invest time on those. So the question is, how do you find those projects? What projects to work on? Uh, I do have a video that I made a while back about some project ideas that you guys can work on and you can check that out if you want to. But I'll talk about it a bit more here and give you some strategies on how to go about finding good projects. So the first thing is, by now you probably have a rough idea about what sorts of companies you want to work at. Maybe it's a top tech company like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, whatever. Or maybe it's more like startups, you're, you're into the startup scene. Or maybe it's your own company, whatever that is. Find a couple of companies that match the companies that you want to work or, or are the exact companies that you want to work at. Now go over to LinkedIn and find a bunch of people that have just started in those companies that are in the same areas that you're trying to get into. If you need LinkedIn premium for that, pay for it. It's well worth it uh, for a few months that you're looking for a job. Once you can find those people, look at their resume and if they're entry level engineers and they've just started, they will most likely list out their college projects or something they've done on their own. And nine out of 10 times, they'll also have a link to their GitHub profile with those projects. So, and that's a great place to start because now you can just look at what other engineers have done, the sort of projects they worked on and how that helped them get into the companies that they were interested in. And that's a great place. And don't, don't, don't worry about like copying anybody or anything like that. It's just getting an idea, right? 
right? You're obviously not using their code, don't do that. But once you get a rough idea about what sorts of project they worked on, pick a few that interests you as well and just try to build that on your own. The second option is if you did bootcamp, you'll probably have a bunch of colleagues that graduated together and they're probably in the same boat as you trying to find projects, trying to get a job. So reach out to them and just get together and talk about a few ideas about new projects or even like a app or whatever you're trying to get into and, and just get together and build those. Self-learning or bootcamp is checked. You've worked on some really cool projects. Now the next step is your resume. You need to build a solid resume. And I see a lot of times that people just think that they can just list out everything on your resume and that should be good enough for them to get the job. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. I have a full video dedicated to how to write good resumes. But the key takeaway from that video should be that on average, your resume gets about six to eight seconds from a recruiter before they pass on to a different resume. So it is really critical to make a resume that solidly stands out, is consistent and shows off what you're looking to get into or what your key strengths are, right? And you have to do that within six to eight seconds. So if you build a resume where you claim a bunch of things, but you can't really back it up, that's lying. Don't do that. But if you embellish it a little bit and make it look good and arrange it a certain way so that it attracts attention, but you have the experience and the knowledge to back it up, I see no harm with that. If nobody looks at your resume, you're not gonna get interviews. So work on it, uh, watch my video if you want to, but do your own research. I'm sure there are other great videos that teach you about resumes, uh, build a resume. Next step is networking. Especially if you've worked on your own, you've self-learned, you've built the project on your own and, and you're a really smart individual and you've figured everything out you'll still struggle at this stage because you don't really have a community to reach out to or have a network to reach out to. That can be a little bit tricky to kind of get referrals or ask about some companies or get leads to potential jobs, right? So networking is a key step. And how do you network? If you did bootcamp, all your colleagues are your network. So keep in touch with them, check up on them, see how they are doing, be supportive. That's already a great networking tool because some of them will get jobs, they'll get good jobs, and those companies will hire and they'll be happy to contact you to pull you into that too, right? And then you can do the same, you know, that's how it works. The second is meetups. There are a lot of software engineering meetups that are open to anybody and they're all probably virtual right now, so it's even better. So join those meetups, especially on areas that interest you and just ask questions, maybe ping someone that you really liked or you, you connected with and ask them if they know any job opportunities, let them know what you're doing. Uh, always have an elevator pitch about yourself, why you got into software engineering, what you've done so far to learn, what projects you've worked on, so they can make a quick assessment of your skill levels as well. So that's another great option. Networking is taken care of. So now you, you need to apply to jobs, interviews, and that kind of fun stuff. You probably already figured out by now that what kind of company you want to work for, but I will give you a brief um, sort of mention here. You, uh, companies generally tend to be divided in a couple of areas, but like the two major categories tend to be like your middle tier or smaller companies or startups that want you to come in and make an immediate impact because they're hiring for that specific position. So the interviews for those companies tend to be relaxed, more conversational. It will be more domain based. So for example, if you mostly work on a Mern stack, they will talk about that stack because that's what they use and they just want to know if you can immediately work on it or not. So if you've got experience and you've worked on a bunch of projects, you're kind of comfortable with the stack you have, those are good companies to interview at because they will ask you based on your projects and it will be more like talking about projects. Oh, how would you have done this? How would you have done that? So it's a more relaxed interview style versus if you wanted to go for like a top tech company like Facebook, Microsoft, Google, all those fan companies, your experience generally gets you the interview, but the moment the interview starts, it's a very structured data structures and algorithms uh, type of coding interview. And if you're good at data structures and algorithms, and if you're good at problem solving and you can handle the stress of someone looking behind you while you're solving problems, that may be even better for you. But if you want to talk about your projects and more domain driven thing, but you don't want to spend another three months now prepping for interviews and how to problem solve within 45 minutes or things like that, then maybe the top tech companies aren't for you maybe smaller startups or middle tier companies are for you so you can make the decision or, or maybe you can do both you know i just wanted to put it out there so that you do know your options and and how they can impact how you prep for your interviews so yeah a combination of all this should help you land the job that you really want and officially help you transition to the world of software engineering uh, i do want to make a note about 
jobs. Do be open to kind of taking something that you may initially feel is not a good fit for you. Say, for example, if you wanted to be a software engineer or developer, but the only options that are coming to you are like quality assurance or software engineering in test or DevOps or reliability engineering. It's okay to be a little bit picky, but don't let them go just because they're not software engineering or development because it's way easier to get into those and prove yourself to your manager, to your colleague, and kind of slowly involve yourself in the development process and kind of get full-time position as a developer than just landing that specific job from the get-go. And, and if you do prove that you can be a good software developer, even though you're working as a QA or some other position in that company, from a company standpoint, it's way less riskier to convert you to a full-time software engineer than to take a risk on hiring someone else. So the chances of you showing your work and converting from a role that you didn't really fancy to the one that you really want are way higher than landing that position on your first try. So do keep an open mind about trying different things out as long as it's overall in the field of software engineering, you should be okay. One more thing about jobs is, especially in the larger tech companies, they have a lot of options for people that are switching careers or people that don't have a software engineering degree or people that are minority to help them get into the field of software engineering. And um, so make sure you do look into those. Microsoft had what they called apprentice program. A couple of other companies like Amazon has, even internally, if you're in finance and you wanna to switch to computer science, they will help you do that. Um, so do look into those. And I, I think the other thing that Microsoft had was uh, for military or minorities or people in late in Korea that wanted to switch, they also offered you some uh, training and helped you kind of look for jobs internally. So those could be an option for larger companies. Do, do check those out uh, because a lot of people don't know about them. And before I wrap this video, I wanted to leave you with one last bit of advice or, or an idea of sorts. So I think software engineering is a tricky field to get into. And the reason I say tricky is because I don't want to say it's hard because if I can do it, you can do it. It's not that hard. But I also don't want to say it's easy because not many can do it. So it probably falls somewhere in between easy and hard. I use tricky because I think how it works is the learning curve when you start is really steep and a lot of people give up there. So my advice to you is expect it to be hard and overwhelming and challenging and everything to go over your head in the beginning because that's how it works. Once you persevere, once you stay committed, once you cross that initial hump, things will get a lot easier and you'll enjoy it a lot more as well. So please keep that in mind that the beginning will be hard. And regardless of whether it's an average engineer, someone like me or someone brilliant like Elon Musk, I promise you that everyone has been through that frustration of not understanding what's going on or feeling like, oh, this is too difficult for me. But the difference between the people that made it versus the people that didn't is they persevered. They continued, they stayed true to their commitment and saw it through. So make sure don't give up, keep trying, do all these things. If you have any questions, feel free to ping me or any software engineer you may know, they should be able to help you out. But keep going and you'll make it. I hope this video is useful and I hope that it'll help you out. And if you found it useful, please like, comment, share the usual stuff. Do consider subscribing. If you have any questions directly to me about this, feel free to ask in the comment section below or DM me on my Instagram. I'd be happy to help out as much as I can. And while you're here, please do check out some of these videos that I think you'll find useful as well. And like I said before, everything I talked about and much more will be in the description below. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.